Now, technically, remember we were supposed to be using subscripts. So that would tell us, if you focus on the heat being absorbed by the gas, that would tell you the delta S of the gas. How about the delta S of the surroundings? That's right. And then you just need the temperature of the surroundings. Right. However, and you need it to be constant. Well. For an isothermal process, we generally so, suppose that they're at the same temperature because we suppose it's the surroundings that are holding the gas at a constant temperature. The surroundings um, are a heat reservoir. Their temperature isn't going to change, so the gas's temperature can't change. So yeah. these temperatures would generally be the same, which is why I'm not putting subscripts on them. So this tells us that these two delta S's would be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction, mm -hmm. uh, opposite in sign. So this would give us the delta S of the surroundings. So what do we know about the delta S of the universe here? It's equal to the difference, or the sum of those two. And what would their sum be? It would be zero. That's right. Now, according to the second law of thermodynamics, when is delta S for the universe equal to zero? Remember that we said that usually the entropy of the universe increases. So how is it possible here that the entropy of the universe is not changing? What type, what, when can that happen? You might want to take another look at what the handout says about our second law of thermodynamics. So here's what the second law tells us. Oh, I guess for reversible processes. Yeah. But we were saying all along, this is a reversible process. So all these things are hanging together again. Isothermal takes it for granted that it's reversible, so we should expect it all along, that the delta S of the whole universe is going to be zero. Mm -hmm. Now, this makes for really hard test questions, because again, most students are not clear in their mind about the distinction between the gas, the surroundings, and the universe. They don't know when to use this formula, and when things are equal to Q over T, and when they're equal to zero, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So we want to take our time and try to lay that out. Now let's think about an adiabatic process, a standard adiabatic process like the ones we talked about last time. Uh, so what would the PV curve look like for that? Um, that's also hyperbolic, but uh, that's a steeper curve. It's good that you remember that it's steeper. Mm -hmm. I think technically it might not be a hyperbola anymore, but anyway, it's a downward sloping curve, yeah. and it's going to be steeper than the isotherm. Good. Well, what can we say about the entropy change of the gas for an adiabatic process? Um, it's equal to the change, or uh, it's equal to MC delta T over the average temperature. So like now that would be. Let's see, that's when we have a substance that's changing temperature. That's right. Since we do have a substance that is changing temperature here, that wasn't what I was going for, but let me think why that's wrong. So that's, that's a reasonable thing to say. Oh, OK. Well, so you're using the formula for when heat is exchanged and it changes the temperature, right? Those are the formulas. Oh, because the heat is yeah, it's true that the temperature might change here, but it's not because of heat exchange. Um, now the, heat might, the temperature might be changing because of work. So this is a, a more complicated case than these cases that we were talking about here. This is a formula you use when there's a heat exchange that's changing the temperature. But that clearly is not applicable here, because what is the heat exchange for this problem? Yeah. That's what adiabatic means. That's right. You were right that the temperature would change here, but it's because of the work that's being uh, that's happening, not because of the heat. But actually, um, we're really close here to seeing seeing something we can say about the entropy change. So, what can we say about the entropy change here? Maybe that it's equal to zero. That's what I was going for. That's yeah. right. How do you know? Because if there's no change in Q, then it's zero over T. Yeah, that's right. If you plug in a zero here, you get the entropy change is zero. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Now, technically speaking, 
we should be using this formula because this is a changing temperature situation. This is a changing temperature because it's not isothermal, but all of the little dQs are going to be zero. Yeah. If the total heat exchange is zero, then all the little heat exchanges would be zero. So you're absolutely right. There's going to be no change in the entropy because entropy um, because no heat is being exchanged. Uh, and again, why are we allowed to use this formula? Well, are these reversible processes? Yes. Right. All the processes we talked about last time, all the special processes are reversible. Otherwise, we couldn't draw PV curves. Mm -hmm. So we can use this formula. The dQs are zero. Good. So what would be the Q for the surroundings? I'm sorry. Well, what would be the entropy change for the surroundings? Uh, zero. For the same reason. Yeah. The gas is not gaining any heat, so the surroundings are not losing any heat. So using the same formula, this would be zero. And what's the entropy change for the universe? Uh, it's equal to zero. Because zero plus zero is zero. Mm -hmm. But we said earlier that entropy usually increases. How can it be that entropy isn't changing here? Uh, what, what type of process does it, when entropy doesn't change for the universe? Reversible. That's right. Well, that's the same result that we got down here. It's okay for the entropy for the universe to not change for a reversible process. In fact, that's the definition of a reversible process. Okay. Now, in this case, the entropy of the universe didn't change because the two different entropy changes cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. This is different. Here, the entropy change didn't change in the universe because none of the individual entropies changed. So we don't want to get these two cases confused. All right, so this is some more stuff to add to what we know about adiabatic processes from last time. There just is no entropy change. Well, so far we've been reviewing processes that we talked about before and just adding something on. But there's a new type of process that you just went over this week, which is an adiabatic free expansion. And this is not the same as the normal adiabatic processes that we saw before. So when they just say adiabatic process, you should think about the reversible processes that we talked about last week. But when they say adiabatic free expansion, that's different. So the model here is, imagine that we have a gas in a container with a partition. Mm -hmm. So these would be the gas molecules. And then you imagine that you take out the partition. Yeah. Well, what are the gas molecules going to do when you take out the partition? Right. Now, would you call that a reversible or an irreversible process? Irreversible. Irreversible. Now, it's kind of hard to see when things are reversible or irreversible, but are we surprised to see the gases spreading out? No. Would you be surprised to, to spontaneously see the gases now all move over to the left? Wait, that would never happen. Yeah. All right. So this is clearly irreversible. We, um, if we go this way on a, on a PV graph, we're not surprised if later we go this way. We can go in either, any direction on a PV graph. They are taken for granted that things are reversible. Um, but we know the process of a gas spreading out into empty space is irreversible. It's not going to spontaneously condense itself again into this position. Yeah. So this is irreversible. So again, adiabatic free expansion is a totally different thing than adi the adiabatic processes that we talked about before. And you just have to watch out for the two words free expansion. If they say adiabatic, they mean this stuff. Mm -hmm. And if they say adiabatic free expansion, they mean this. So when they say adiabatic, you assume that it's reversible. Mm -hmm. But when they say adiabatic free expansion, we know it's irreversible. Of course, these are assumed to be reversible too. Okay. Now, we are not allowed to use this formula in this case. Why does this formula not apply to this adiabatic free expansion? Um, because that's for reversible. Yeah, that's right. It would be tempting to try to use this formula, but it doesn't apply because this is only for reversible processes. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's tempting because if you use this formula, you would think the entropy change was zero. Um, but that is only for the reversible, that's only for a reversible adiabatic process. So we do not say here that the entropy change is zero. We can't just use this formula. Just by looking at this, um, has this, has this rectangle become more ordered or more disordered? Um, more disordered. Yeah, it used to have two separate portions, a portion with gas and a portion without gas. And now the gas is spread out to be more disorderly. Uh, another measure of disorder, built, um, a measure of order is predictability. Mm -hmm. um, when something is more ordered, it's more predictable. 
So for example, let's say you're trying to predict where you're going to find a particular gas particle. Well, you can predict for this box that you're going to find any gas particle on the left. But for this box, you can't be as precise. For this box, you can only predict that it can be anywhere in the box. Mm -hmm. So this has become, the gas particles here have become less predictable. You don't know where they're going to be, so there's more disorder. Mm -hmm. So clearly, it would give us the wrong answer to just plug in a Q equals zero here. Well, that's why it's so important to emphasize that this is for reversible processes only. So how do we find the delta S here? Uh, well, I think I'm going to spare you the proof for this one. Um, this one, although they do kind of prove this in the textbook, but I don't think your instructor would want you to prove this. Uh, let's see, do I remember how it goes? It's... Oh, yeah, he proved this in class, but said that it wasn't important. We just needed to be able to use that equation. There you go. Okay, then why did he prove it? All right, well, anyway. Uh, so here's the delta S of the gas. for an adiabatic free expansion. 